David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have a pen from you from Visconti. Uh, I was going through all the pens I needed to review and there was an inordinate amount of, of Viscontis. Uh, so you might just be seeing uh, several of them over the next few months. You know, I try to space out the manufacturers a bit, but uh, I have about a dozen Viscontis in the queue that I need to get around to reviewing. Um, I picked this pen up from uh, Chatterley Luxuries. Uh, being on the Chatterley Luxuries mailing list can be a very dangerous thing. Uh, they focus on high-end and limited edition pens as well as watches and other luxury items. And on a somewhat regular basis, Bryant, the gentleman behind Chatterley Luxuries, uh, offers some very nice pens at prices which are very hard to pass up. And I succumbed to the temptation after seeing uh, that they had this particular pen on sale. And what pen is that? Uh, this is the limited edition Visconti Wall Street. Uh, what I'm going to do is go over the parts and the features of the Wall Street, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, show some measurements, some size comparisons, and then provide a writing sample. The pen arrives in this box. Um, you know, many pen companies do this, uh, but I like it when the box has a flap on the front that kind of makes it easier to remove the pen box rather than having to like turn it upside down. The box itself is a, a rather a nice hard plastic that has some heft to it. And then this is what it looks like inside. Uh, inside is some nice fo uh, faux leather. It's really soft. Uh, and uh, we'll take a look at the pen in a second. But underneath the tray, we have a couple of things. Uh, there is a uh, identity card uh, that came with it. And then we have a, uh, a standard Visconti marketing piece. Uh, you know, there's really nothing specific to this pen though. Um, you know, while this is a limited edition, uh, it's a limited edition of 4,000 for 4,000 pens. It might've been nice to have some marketing documentation that's specific to this pen. Uh, and then mine also came with a, uh, a little, little Chatterley uh, bookmark here, which is nice. But more importantly, we have the pen. Uh, and this is the Visconti Wall Street. Um, speaking of Wall Street, when I was in my mid-20s, I, I actually worked as a stockbroker for a couple of years. Um, I had my Series 7 and 63. Uh, and if you've ever seen the movie Boiler Room, uh, that film hit very close to home for me. Uh, the firm portrayed in that film was very much like the firm that I worked at. Um, I was kind of naive and wasn't aware of this when I started, but it, it wasn't the most reputable. Uh, and while I loved the financial planning side of the work, the vast, vast majority of the job involved cold calling and basically begging people uh, for money over the phone. You know, I ended up feeling more like a glorified telemarketer and a used car salesman than a financial planner. I have plenty of stockbroker stories, but I'll save those for another time. Um, Visconti launched the Wall Street line back in 2003. Um, this is the limited edition version, which consisted of a run of 4,000 pens, which came out a few years later. Uh, it comes in green and red and blue, and what I have here, they call either the platinum or the gray. Now, in regard to the blue, it's a little strange because I've seen promotional videos from Visconti when the time it was launched that only mentioned three of the colors and not blue. But I've seen pictures of a limited edition blue, so they might have come out with that one at a later date. Um, the Wall Street is the first Visconti which incorporated the squared circle design. Um, it's a little hard to see here, but basically it's a square pen with uh, rounded edges, which makes the pen a little bit more ergonomic. And it's the same on the barrel as well as the cap. Uh, the, Viscon or the Wall Street is made from celluloid. Um, celluloid is a composition of natural materials. Uh, it kind of includes cotton and alcohol and a substance called camphor, uh, which is like a waxy transparent solid, which is quite flammable. Uh, so I don't know if you want to be holding this pen close to any open flames. Uh, that's really not a good idea for any pen, but this one especially. Uh, celluloid is very time consuming to manufacture. Uh, a batch can take up to an entire year to produce. Uh, and what they did here is they stacked alternating sheets of transparent and uh, what they describe as mother of pearl uh, celluloid, but that's just a term to describe the texture. It doesn't actually contain mother of pearl. Um, the end result is uh, 
that the design is basically uh, the sheets create a skyscraper effect in the material. Uh, the design is meant to resemble a skyscraper at night with some of the lights turning off and on. Uh, you know, this is an effect very similar to what Parker used in their vacuumatic. Um, you know, the material can be a bit wavy, so while at one end of the pen the lines can basically be horizontal, at the other end they can be a little bit at an angle. Um, nothing too drastic, but understand that the layers most likely will not be perfectly uniform throughout the entire pen. Now, I mentioned this is a limited edition. Uh, there are two main differences between this and a standard Wall Street, and those are in the section and the filling system, and I'll talk about those as I'm going over the parts of the pen. So, let's go ahead and start with the cap. Um, here's a look at the finial. Now, I don't believe this pen utilizes Visconti's My Pen system, where you can trade out some of the, uh, the, the end, uh, pieces on the end for things like your initials or astrological line or a gem, uh, stuff like that. Uh, then we have the traditional Visconti clip, which is uh, meant to resemble the Ponte Vecchio Bridge, which spans the Arno River in Florence, Italy. Uh, the cap is slightly angled, getting larger the closer you get to the cap band. Uh, there's about a millimeter and a half difference between the finial and the cap band, which is actually inlaid into the material very nicely. Uh, on mine, you could barely feel the transition between the celluloid and the silver plated band. On one side of the band, it is engraved with Wall Street, and the other side has the number of the pen. In this case, uh, of this, uh, the case of this pen, uh, it is uh, 1413 of 4000. Now, I've seen information about this pen elsewhere that states that the trim is platinum, but the card that uh, came with this pen states that it is silver. Uh, now, so there might have been different versions of this pen, so it's possible that some you might see out there are platinum. Uh, there is an angled step down to the barrel, which angles down slightly, similar to the cap, about a millimeter and a half, uh, uh, a millimeter and a half from here to here, down to a silver band and the knob at the end of the pen, which operates the filling system. Uh, and then at the end of the knob is a rounded off point. Uh, the cap twists off to reveal this very nice 23 karat palladium nib. Uh, you know, I really like the size of this number six nib. Now, I've seen that some of these limited editions have two-toned gold nibs, uh, but this one here has their Palladium Dream Touch nib. And here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, then we have the section, which is just very slightly flared at the end. Uh, and then it angles up to the threads, which are actually very well hidden in this pen. Uh, they blend in with the celluloid layers, so you barely even see them. Uh, and they're not sharp at all. Uh, then we have a rather generous ink window. Uh, now, I uh, generally I like ink, ink windows, but there's times when I feel an ink window kind of breaks up the aesthetics of a pen. Uh, but I, I really don't feel that way about the Wall Street. I feel that this ink window and the transitions on either side of it blend really well into this pen and really don't divert your eye from the rest of this very cool looking pen. Uh, you know, I mentioned one of the differences between the standard and limited edition models was the section. Uh, on this pen, the uh, section is celluloid matching the rest of the pen, but on the standard model, it's uh, more of a slick metal. Uh, the other difference between models is the filling system. The standard model is a cartridge converter pen, and this limited edition utilizes Visconti's double reservoir power filler system. Uh, the filling system is very similar to that of other vacuum fillers, like the uh, Pilot 823 or the Twisby VAC 700, and it's the same one that's used on their Homo sapiens. Uh, when you fill this pen, what you do is you unscrew the end and then you extend the rod. Then you insert it into the ink and then you press down, which creates a vacuum in the barrel. Uh, and when you push all the way down past a certain point, uh, the vacuum is released and ink is sucked up into the barrel. Um, you write with the knob at the, uh, at the end of the barrel closed, and there is a, a reservoir in the, uh, of ink in the section here, about to here. Uh, and then once that ink is depleted, you simply unscrew the end back, pull it back just a tiny bit to release the seal between the two chambers, and the additional ink will flow from the second chamber to the first chamber, and you'll be good to go again. 
you know, I find this pen to be very comfortable in the hand. Uh, it's not light, uh, but it has a good heft to it. The cap does post, and it does post securely, uh, but it doesn't post that deeply. Uh, and also the cap is a bit on the heavier side at 17 grams, so I feel it, it kind of throws off the balance of this pen to use it posted. I do like the feel of the celluloid in my hand. It, you know, it's a bit warmer than acrylic, uh, and it's nice. It feels, feels really nice. Um, you know, I like that you could kind of see the interior tubing through the translucent layers of material, uh, but the textured layers give the tubing the illusion that it's striped as well. Uh, it's just an interesting look. Okay, there are two things that bug me significantly about this pen. Uh, the first was a little nitpicky, but the second thing was a bit more significant. Um, first of all, it really annoys me when you have a pen with a very distinct shape uh, and uh, on the cap and the barrel and they don't line up correctly when capped. And that's what we have here on this pen. Um, with my pen, I know it's very hard to see, but I'd like for the flat surfaces of the cap and the barrel to be at the same orientation. Uh, and it's off by about five degrees. Now, there are multiple cap threads, and I can accept it if one of the cap options lines up perfectly and the other ones do not. But in this case, uh, the pen doesn't line up correct correctly using any of the threads. Like I said, it's off by about five degrees. From a manufacturing standpoint, understand that it's not easy to get the or orientation perfect, but it's not impossible. And, you know, I expect more from high-end pen manufacturers such as Visconti. The second more serious issue I had with this pen was when I received it, the nib did not perform well right out of the box. It was over polished. It experienced hard starts to the point where it was basically unusable. R literally right after receiving it, I sent it off to Coles of London, Visconti's US uh, service provider, uh, and they traded out nibs at no cost. Uh, they also did it in a matter of days. Uh, there's been times when I've had to do a warranty repair through them and they've had to send the pen back to Italy. And in those cases, the turnaround is about three weeks, uh, which is a bit of a pain when you get a pen and then have to send it off immediately and you just purchased a pen and you don't get it back for three weeks. Uh, thankfully, that wasn't the case with this pen. Uh, after getting this pen back, it writes fantastic. Um, it's one of my favorite Visconti nibs. Uh, it's wet and juicy and very smooth. I just really wish that it wrote this way right out of the box. Uh, the lack of quality control is an issue which has is dogged Visconti for a while, you know, and it's a bit frustrating because when they get it right, their nibs are spectacular and they get it really right. But it's one of those things where every once in a while they don't. And in the end, I, you know, I'm not mad. It's like I'm more disappointed. Uh, as I said before, I kind of expect more from Visconti. Well, maybe a little mad. Um, you know, please don't make me send a brand new pen back for warranty repairs. That's not a good way to make your customers happy. Uh, you know, when this pen was introduced, I believe it retailed for around $900. You know, I was able to pick this one up on sale for $500, which is not inexpensive. Uh, you know, but having been out, out of the market for a while, out on the market for a while, and a limited edition, uh, they're becoming more difficult to find. Uh, but if you could find one, I feel that the $500 price range uh, isn't extravagant. You know, would I like it if it was $100 less, less expensive? Of course. Um, but while it's on the high end of what I would pay for this pen, uh, I feel that it's a fair price for a very unique pen that writes fantastic if you get one that works well out of the box. Okay, now it's time for some measurements, some size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Visconti Limited Edition Wall Street. Uh, in regard to some other Visconti pens that have the squared circle design, here it is with a Opera Metal Speedboat. Uh, then here it is with an Opera Elements Air. You can see that's a little bit smaller. Uh, and then here it is with an Opera Crystal. Then in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Mont Blanc 149. Then here it is with a Pelican M805. Uh, and then 
Something that just arrived yesterday that I'm very excited about. Uh, it is my Nakaya Dorsal Fin version 2. And this is in the Akatama Nuri. Um, I, I just think this thing is gorgeous. Uh, I'll obviously be doing a review at this at a later point in time, but uh, so far having this pen less than 24 hours, I I'm very, very impressed uh, with it. But that's what it looks like in comparison to the rest of these pens. So here we go with the writing sample for the Visconti. Actually get it in the screen here. And we'll just say this is the uh, limited edition Wall Street. This is a medium 23 karat palladium nib. And the ink that I'm using is Iroshizuku. Pecky. This is what the ink looks like. This is one of my favorite blues. Uh, I just think that it has a, a nice deep saturation with a, a bit of a pop to it. Um, it's very similar to like Kobe number 17. Uh, and then uh, uh, it's just a little bit less, we'll call it less vibrant than the Private Reserve Naples Blue. But all three of these are, uh, are some of my favorite blues. Uh, this is what the, the bottle looks like. Uh, the Irosuzuku bottles are some of my favorite. I just think they look really nice. And I know it's hard to see because I'm holding it at an odd angle, but um, I am very close to finishing this bottle. This is uh, maybe about 20% left in this bottle, and I, I've never finished a bottle of ink, so I'm kind of focusing on Konpeki right now, and so uh, who knows, in, uh, in not too long I might actually finish this bottle. Okay, here we go with the writing sample. Um, this is a medium nib, uh, and it, you can get a decent amount of line variation out of it uh, and that it's one of those nibs that is very wet and very juicy and just using very little pressure uh, I'm just not even putting any pressure on it at all and you can see it's a decent ink flow even with no pressure whatsoever so um, while I mentioned it didn't work well out of the box my replacement nib is spectacular um, that you could see that the ink flow is uh, rather heavy on this, but not unreasonable, but it's a rather heavy ink flow. And in regard to reverse writing, and then in regard to some faster writing, the feed has no problem in keeping up whatsoever. So, here we have the Visconti Limited Edition Wall Street. Uh, it's a very unique pen that feels really great in the hand, and, and as you saw, when the nib is right, it performs very, very well. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.